We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for May 19th, 2013. And today, pretty much a study, although it's current events, pretty much, a study pretty much dedicated to the Pope, Catholicism, and the interplay there, then segueing into Islam and how this all ties together. Also talking about how the United Nations now is becoming intricately interlinked with the Catholic Church, particularly with this new Pope that they have. So the first report we have is Pope, a global spiritual leader, proclaims UN leader Ban Ki-moon. And here we have on the, basically the first page of the PDF, it's a 22 page PDF for today, so probably looking at three to four parts. Uh, we have a picture of this uh, Ban Ki-moon shaking hands with the new Pope. And uh, the Secretary General of the UN hails the Pope as a, quote, spiritual leader for the one world government. So, I mean, it's all played out biblically like the Bible said it was going to play out. And uh, uh, we're seeing this formation right before our very eyes. The Secretary General also... Uh, emphasize the goals of social justice and uh, shared between the Vatican and the United Nations. So, social justice. Okay, we're going to get to that in a second. So, in other words, they're trying to see what common ground they have, the Vatican has with the United Nations, and they have the absolute same common ground and really the same agenda. The, I always call it the unholy sea, and the UN share common goals and ideas, said Ban, one of the first world leaders to be received at an audience by the new pontiff. Um, He actually got in there before I did. I was the first that the Pope saw after he got in office, because, as it should be. And then, later, you have Obama and Ban Ki-moon and the others. So, I I don't like to brag, though. You know, I, I just... I just figured I'd throw that in there. Anyway, um, so let's go further here. Uh, He said, we discussed the need to advance social justice and accelerate the work to meet the Millennium Development Goals, Ban said after the meeting. So I wanted to know a little bit more about these Millennium Development Goals that the UN is trying to enact. And I went up and just did a little bit of research and found there's these eight goals that they have. And the Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, are eight international development goals that were officially established following the Millennium Summit of the United Nations in 2000. Following the adoption of the United Nations Millennium Declaration, all 193 United Nations member states and at least 23 international organizations have agreed to achieve these goals by the year 2015. So this is a very big chunk of the coming New World Order enacting these goals. And the Catholic Church, probably the most powerful religious institution on the planet, and the United Nations, arguably the most powerful political institution on the planet, are yoked up, they're in lockstep, and they're trying to achieve these Millennium Goals by the year 2015. So, these eight goals, now I'm going to translate what they mean by all these goals, because they're going to say, if you just read these, you'd say, oh, these sound, you know, some of them sound really good. Uh, Number one, eradicating extreme poverty and hunger. Um, Total lies and garbage. They've had that ability for tons and tons of years. But they have no real, they can say that all day long, but everywhere the United Nations gets involved, particularly in third world com- countries, the situation typically only worsens. Okay? They'll let food rot on the docks before they'll actually, you know, bring it in. It's, it's a well known fact. And so that's garbage and lies. Number two, achieving universal primary education. Translated meaning, they want to brainwash every single person into their way of satanic thought patterns and thinking and uh, Big Brother bringing in the New World Order. Okay, so that's what they mean by point two. Point three, promoting gender equality 
and empowering women. Yeah, right. Um, gender equality, meaning gays, bisexual, transgender, they're all the same. In fact, they're actually more of a privileged status um, than regular uh, people and uh, heterosexual people. So that's what they mean by uh, gender equality. And then for reducing child mortality rates, uh, more unbelievable total lies. As their stated goal has been over and over, you look at the first commandment of the Georgia Guidestones, reduce world population to 500 million. But see, they can't have that <laughs> as their goal. They're going to tell you one thing, and they're trying to achieve the exact opposite of what they're trying to tell you, at least in this particular case for sure. Reducing child mortality rates, give me a break. What a lie from the pit of hell. They're going to try, they're going to do this through vaccinations and more meds. Okay, and other nefarious things they're going to be implementing or in, are implementing. Okay, so they're actually trying to absolutely explode child mortality rates so the kids would die quicker. And this is the whole theme of why we have abortion worldwide and governmental sponsored organizations like Planned Parenthood and these types of people, Bill Melinda Gates, and, and because they're trying to increase child mortality. They want to reduce world population, they want to reduce it. Most likely 90 to 95 percent range. I mean, Georgia Guidestones, 500 million. I mean, we're about, we're over 7 billion right now. You know, you do the math, that's a lot of people that have to die. So these are all total bald faced lies, essentially. Uh, point five, improving maternal health. Again, more unbelievable lies and garbage. That will be done through, I'm sure, vaccinations, which is the primary method that they're going to give us health. But health doesn't come from a needle, and it sure doesn't come from some vaccine, many of which are cultured off literal aborted babies. And I, I'm not making that up. They literally are cultured off aborted babies. They're cultured off what they call human diploid cells. If you look it up in the physician's desk reference, there's at least 17 and probably a whole lot more by now. Uh, all kinds of witches brew of garbage they put into these vaccines. They have the capability of putting injectable... Um, essentially nanorobots or uh, microchip dust into the vaccines at this point. You don't even know they're there. Uh, aluminum, formaldehyde, which is embalming fluids, squalene, um, uh, mercury, which is beyond neurotoxic. I mean, just an absolute total witch's brew. And this is how they're going to help with child mortality rates and maternal health. Uh, which, again, it's all total lies. The exact opposite of what they're trying to really achieve. And then combating HIV and AIDS, which is one of the biggest killers, particularly in Africa, um, and also malaria. They're going to combat malaria. Now, no, they, they want to actually do whatever they can to make these things worse. Because then that will make mortality, uh, lower the life expectancy, kill a ton of people, and these people that are dying are viewed as sacrifices to Satan. That's how the Illuminati would view these people that are dying in mass. Okay, so um, I mean, let's just go further. Point seven: ensuring environmental sustainability. Now, whenever you see the word sustainability, it's a buzz new new world order buzzword for reducing population. See, we're grieving Mother Gaia, planet Earth, by our mere presence. So what has to happen is we have to be ultimately be herded into cities where she's not grieved near as much. And we can all be controlled that way and herded into these cities um, where we can be controlled, manipulated, killed off, you name it. Because we can't have, they can't have people roaming the countrysides and people out in the wilderness and in the country doing their own thing or trying to, you know, be self-sufficient in that regard. They can't have control over people like that uh, near as well. So, whenever you see the word sustainability, that's what they're basically saying is depopulation and um, a basically New World Order, Big Brother, 1984, George Orwell grid uh, system where you're locked into some type of city and um, uh, you know your ability to travel is basically almost non-existent at that point. That's If, if you let things go out, this is the way they would try to... Uh, work it. And then number eight, developing a global partnership for development. Whatever that means. Developing a global partnership for development. Okay, whatever. Um, basically, all getting yoked up, all in the same 
satanic, antichrist, false prophet playbook is what their goals are. Okay? And so, Ban Ki-moon goes on to state, quote, Pope Francis is a man of peace and purpose. He is a voice for the voiceless. Again, more total satanic lies. Um, I post my teaching here that I did on 3.17.13 of this year. And on the table of contents, the first two things I talked about was new pope tied to Argentin- Argent- Argentina's dirty war. Uh, the guy's got a very long list of, of crimes that he has committed. But at the same time, these crimes, he was faithful to the Catholic Church. He, was, he did what he was told, and this is the reason why he was allowed to get into the position of pope. All of the popes are absolute, total, reprobate devils from the pits of hell. And they only got where they got by totally selling out to Satan. Okay, Just like the rock stars do, like Lady Gaga and them, you got to sell out to Satan. You, you've got to prove to Satan that you're going to do as you're told. Those are the only people that are allowed to move up, and I also believe that it most likely has to do with their bloodline as well. From, a, from an Illuminati standpoint. And then the second point here is accused criminals. Uh, accused criminal becomes the first Jesuit pope. He's also the first Jesuit pope, also in the, in the part before this. This is part two of the teaching for 317.13. I read the, Jesu, the extreme Jesuit oath of unction, which is the oath they have to take before they become a Jesuit. And it's <laughs> beyond horrific. So, if you want to hear that, just access part one. And... Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio, which is the current Pope, now Pope Francis, is tainted with dirty war allegations and baby trafficking, and he is now the new Pontiff of Rome. So we just went over a lot of the things that were exposed about him to prove the point that you just have to be sold out to Satan and do as you're told and not sell out the Catholic Church in order to move up in the hierarchy. So... Uh, Ban Ki-moon said he also invited the Pope to visit the United Nations at his earliest convenience. Uh, Ban gave the Pope a large book with the Charter of the United Nations in six languages, just so he would be reminded of what the goals of the UN are, which is total world domination and bringing in the New World Order, a one world government, one world political system, one world currency, and one world religious system. Uh, Next... Report, is the Pope is Pope Francis laying the groundwork for a one world religion? After he was elected, the, t- the cover of Time magazine declared Pope Francis to be the new world Pope. That's what Time magazine said. Okay. Time magazine basically a mouthpiece for Satan. Okay. He is he was known as quote the new world Pope. Why didn't they just say the New World Order Pope? That way they could have really got it all in there. Uh, And since his election, Pope Francis has made it abundantly clear that he is going to make ecumenical outreach a top priority. He has spoken of his, quote, determination to continue on the path of ecumenical dialogue, end of quote. And he has already held a number of very high-profile ecumenical meetings. Now, ecumenicism mainly refers to initiatives aimed at greater Christian unity or cooperation. It is used predominantly by and with reference to Christian denominations and Christian churches separated by doctrine, history, and practice. There's literally thousands of denominations, of which there's zero Bible for. Zero. Okay. No Bible for denominations, as far as I can see. But there's thousands of these splinter, so-called, most of them pseudo-Christian denominations. Some of them rank apostate. Some of them... You, you could still walk into a church now and get saved in certain denominations, but most of them, I don't believe that would be the case. And what the Pope needs to do is take all of these splinter organizations and unite them. That will be one of the main thrusts of the Catholic Church, to get all people that would, that would refer to themselves as Christian in any way, shape, or form, and get them all on the same page so, so we can have a one-world religion. Now, obviously, they're all going to have to yoke up, ultimately with Muslims, Buddhism, Hinduism, whatever, Zoroastrianism. All of those are going to have to get on the same page, but one thing, at, one step at a time. These are like satanic baby steps, you know. And um, this is what the Pope is, is 
really working to do right now. So, not only has Pope Francis worked hard to reach out to leaders from various Christian traditions, he has also made it a point to try to acknowledge the mutual bonds that he feels with other religions. See? So, it's not just the Christians, it's all religions. For example, in one recent address, he made it a point to say that he believes that Muslims worship and pray to the, quote, one God that he also worships. Well, That's true. They both worship Satan, ultimately. And they do worship the same. And so do Catholics, in general. Well, no, no, I don't. I pray to whatever. Whatever saint or whatever. I pray to Mary. I pray to Jesus. You know, you can't have it all those ways. It doesn't work that way. Totally unbiblical in the Bible. The Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You know, you pray to the Father through Jesus Christ regarding what the New Testament lays out for prayer guidelines. Uh, Don't pray to Allah. You don't pray to some saint that, you know, whatever. And once we're saved, we're all saints. Okay, It's not like what the Catholic Church deems a saint, and then they're canonized afterward, you know, after they've proven this and after they've died. All a bunch of total lies, garbage, that has no biblical merit, no basis in the Bible at all. But, you know, they kind of make up the rules as they go. So, um... He is basically saying the Muslims worship and pray to the same God that he does, which is true. And this, all roads lead to the same God philosophy, is a hallmark of the one world religion that the global elite have been slowly building toward for decades. The global elite know that even with that even with a one world economy and a one world government, humanity will never be truly united until there is a single global religion. See, the religious aspect is really the linchpin. Because most people worldwide, the vast majority, are not atheists. You know, they believe in some whatever God they're worshipping. Whether it's Buddha, whether it's Krishna, whether it's the Ma or Allah, or whatever, whether it's their ancestors, most people are not atheists, meaning they don't believe that there's any, any God or gods in this particular case with some of the more overt pagan religions. Um... You have to have the religious component. In fact, the religious component is the most important of all because that will enable the one world economy and the one world political system and the one world currency. The the religious aspect is the absolute linchpin for the other stuff to happen. And this is why the Antichrist and the false prophet have to come with all signs and lying wonders and with all miracles whereby which they will deceive, if it were possible, even the very elect. Okay, so this is why we have to be on guard. And this is, this is the strong delusion that God is sending that they will believe a lie, that they might all be damned to receive not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So all this stuff is predicted. All is going to happen. We can't do anything about it. Not to say we're not supposed to expose it and reprove the unfruitful works of darkness and have no fellowship with them. So, you know, that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices lest he get an advantage of us, according to 2 Corinthians 2.11, or that we're destroyed for lack of knowledge, as according to Hosea 4.6. We don't want to be have any of that stuff happen to us. We want to be on guard and watchful, as Jesus said in Matthew 24, to be not deceived. So we're not, we're not supposed to just be ignorant of all these things. And... Um, If we're not ignorant of it, then it's our responsibility to help warn others as well um, as part of the body of Christ. I mean, if you were in a burning building, wouldn't you want somebody to come and help you out? If you were in a burning building, you didn't know it was burning, I should say. And you'd want somebody to come and help you, right? Well, this is all I'm talking about here, just helping people to to see this. Uh, And it's so obvious what's going on here. So let's go further here. And all confirms what the Bible says. Um, so, unfortunately, this one world religion that they are seeking to establish is diametrically opposed to the Christianity that we find in the Bible, as I just said. By throwing out biblical truth for the sake of friendship between men and women of different religious traditions, Pope Francis is fundamentally betraying the faith that he claims to represent. If there is going to be a one world religion, there will have to be a bond formed between Roman Catholicism and Islam. This is very important. Why? They are the two largest religious traditions on the planet. So it's a big deal for the New World Order to get Islam and Catholicism, or, well, false Christianity on the same page. It's a big deal, you know. Um, 
And there's going to have to be a lot of uh, supposed supernatural events that take place in order for that to happen. There's no way you're going to put the leaders of the Christian faith and the leaders of Islam together in a room and have it hash it out. And, and they're going to come out all in hands singing Kumbaya. Not going to happen. No way. Okay, There's got to be things happening on a mega supernatural level and plane for them to all get on the same playing field and and admit that they, you know, all worship the same God or whatever because right now that we're not even close to that. But the right things happen from a line signs and wonder standpoint, that will happen and and I believe this will probably happen nearing the end of World War 3 that will take pr- place primarily in the Middle East, obviously Israel and her allies against the Middle East and Islam. And probably out of the ashes of World War III will emerge this false prophet and antichrist. And most likely these ascended masters that I've mentioned that will try to reconcile all the world religions together and get everybody on the same playing field. And a lot of that will be through lying signs and wonders and miracles. The Bible says that because of these signs and lying wonders and miracles that they will deceive the whole earth. That's the primary means by which... The Antichrist and the false prophet, false prophets and anyone or any entities they're working with, because obviously we're dealing with Satan, fallen angels, demons, devils, okay? They're the forces behind these things. Um, There's going to be a ton of that. And that's why I keep harping on that point, because that's going to be the chief reason why people fall for this. It's not going to be because somebody convinced you cleverly, you know. It's going to be from... All these these false signs and wonders going on. So, let's go further here. Um, so, these are the two largest religious traditions on the planet, so any truly global religion would definitely require the participation of both of them. That is one reason why Pope Francis has already had to say about Islam is so noteworthy. The following comes from remarks that he made during his very first ecumenical meeting. He said, quote, I then greet and cordially thank you all, dear friends belonging to other religious traditions. First of all, the Muslims. The Muslims, who we're going to discuss at length um, for really the remainder of this particular teaching, after we get through the Catholicism stuff. First of all, the Muslims, who worship the one God, living and merciful, and call upon him in prayer. So this blasphemous devil from the pit of hell has the audacity to say that Muslims who worship Allah, who is the moon pagan moon god, and has always been the pagan moon god, has, he has the audacity to equate Allah, this fallen angel, with the god of the universe. The Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. He has the audacity to equate them. Then he goes on to say, I really appreciate your presence. In it, I see a tangible sign of the will to grow in mutual esteem and cooperation for the common good of humanity. Yeah, the common good. That's why the Quran says all the unbelievers will burn in a, must be beheaded and will burn in a hell and Allah will put them there and, you know, kill the unbelievers Deceive them, slay the infidel, kill them, martyr you know, martyr yourself and you have seventy two virgins. Because they're they're trying to, to really shoot for the common good of humanity. They're they're doing that all out of the goodness of their own wonderful hearts. So and then it goes on to say, But Allah and the God of the Bible are not the same. For example, Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God, Muslims de- de- deny this vehemently. For much more on why Allah and the God of the Bible are not the same, please see this article. There's a link you can click on there. Or you can just go up to my website and key in Muslim and or Islam and you will see the plethora of teachings I've done on this subject exposing the wickedness of Islam. Uh, Islam is one of these religions, unlike any other, that I can barely keep up. I, I can't, in fact. I cannot keep up with all the evil that this religion generates. I, I, I just can't keep up with it. It's too much. I'm only 
th- what I'm giving you today is trying to get a like a uh, drink off a fire hydrant or a fire hose that's in fully open. You're only going to get a little bit, okay? Uh, but I'm going to try to go through some things where we look at this. Why you know the Catholic Church, which is going to be really part of the backbone of the coming one world religion. They're really obsessed with getting on the same page as Islam. So, looking at, okay, well, what is Islam? What is What are they all about? Well, let's look at that today. Now, the first report here, which kind of segues from the last, is uh, Pope Francis has proclaimed the first saints of his pontificate in a ceremony at the Vatican. A list which includes 800 victims of an atrocity carried out by Islamic Ottoman soldiers in 1480. These were Islamic Ottoman soldiers. They were beheaded in southern in the southern Italian town of Otranto after refusing to convert to Islam. See, this is Islam. You convert or die. Not to say the Catholic Church wouldn't do the same thing, but Catholicism is not Christianity. It's not even close to it. It's not what the New Testament defines as Christianity. Jesus Christ didn't tell us to go around and kill, torture, and burn people at the stake for not converting to Christianity, which was common practice for the Catholic Church. And it was also common practice for the good old Muslims. So these people refused, 800, I believe, Catholics, refused to convert to Islam, so the um, uh, Muslim Ottoman soldiers beheaded them all, in one, I guess in one day. There was no hint... But there was no hint of anti-Islamic sentiment in the homily that Pope Francis delivered before tens of thousands of worshippers gathered in St. Peter's Square. So th- there's all this contradiction, contradictory behavior. I'm surprised they would pick these 800 people to um, canonize or whatever they're doing. Yeah, canonize. Meaning they actually took their skeletons and shot them out of a cannon. No, just kidding. Teasing. Um, I'm surprised they would pick these 800 people who were all beheaded by Muslims to canonize right after the Pope's come out and said, you know, oh, you, 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 uh, Islam, you Muslims worship the same God we do, the one true God, and pray to him. You know, I'm surprised they'd want to kind of stir that pot, but he did. And, uh, that was the first, has proclaimed the first saints of his pontificate and ceremony at the Vatican. So, see, he says who's saints and who's not saints, because he's the Pope, and he's supposedly infallible. He believes he's the vicar of Christ on earth. The vicar of Christ is actually one of his titles. Vicar means substitute. So he believes he's the substitute for Jesus Christ on planet earth. Okay? He's nothing but a devil from the pit of hell that will burn in hell fire white hot, though. Okay, that's all he is. He's nothing but a... a absolute total tool of Satan to take as many people to hell on planet Earth as possible. Sorry, I know I'm sugarcoating things, but, you know, this is actually what the Pope is. Can you imagine when he gets to hell? If you pay the price in hell for your sins on Earth, because Jesus Christ isn't paying your sins in hell, you've rejected his blood, you've rejected his death, burial, and resurrection. Can you imagine when the, any pope gets to hell and all the people that stayed in the Catholic apostate faith and clung to it and adored him and worshipped him and followed him, the blood on that pope's... I, I can't even fathom it. Now, I understand they made their own choices. But still, I mean, I just can't even fathom uh, the punishment for any pope in hell. Uh, next report. Muslims believe Jesus will soon join the Mahdi to force Christians to convert to Islam. Okay, I just took a little break because I wanted to add in the teaching I've actually done on this particular Jesus there in reference to in this article. Known as Master Jesus, one of the ascended masters that will be making coming on the scene very soon. He looks like the same... Jesus pictures you see in all the churches that Michelangelo and the Catholic Church have given us. Um, that's the Jesus that's coming back. Whereas the Bible talks about, you know, if a man hath long hair, does it, does it nature therefore itself teacheth you that it is a shame for man to have long hair? Okay. Whereas the long-haired 
Adonis-looking type Jesus that's portrayed in the Catholic Church is not biblical. Uh, the Bible talks about Jesus' physical appearance that says that there was no beauty in him that we would desire him, okay, from a physical standpoint. And so all this, people are being prepared through these pictures, probably through the images of this false Jesus more than anything else. If you have these images in your house, just understand, you have a big fat devil that you've just brought into your house. You have a picture of an ascended master devil incarnate in your house. Okay? You need to get that and any other cursed objects out of your house. Period. You know, it's a no-brainer. Well, I couldn't burn the picture of Jesus. It's not Jesus that you have a picture of. It is a devil. A devil. Okay? We wouldn't have any ability to know what Jesus looked like anyway. Like I said, Michelangelo, who was obviously way after Jesus, started painting those pictures, and that was his interpretation of what he thought Jesus looked like, and that spawned out of the Catholic Church, which we know is of the devil. Okay? So, I mean, anyway, I'm going to get to that in a second, my teaching I've done on that subject. But, the Muslims believe Jesus will soon join the Mahdi, okay, or Imam Mahdi, or um, also known as the, I believe, the 12th Imam, Okay, who is their awaited savior? Okay, Muslims believe Jesus will soon join the Mahdi or the Muslims' awaited savior to force Christians to convert to Islam. Now, I don't believe it's going to go down that way. I think that when this Jesus makes his appearance, ultimately he will try to force people to convert to whatever the one world religion is going to be designated to be. It's not going to be converting everybody over to Islam. Okay, you have to understand the Muslims believe certain things, the Christians believe certain unbiblical things, the Buddhists believe totally unbiblical things. People have a lot of false conceptions of what they believe is going to happen in the future. I'm not saying all Christians believe the false thing, but I'm saying a lot of them do. So, contemporary Muslim apocalyptists have borrowed from their Christian counterparts to discern the dates regarding the Antichrist's arrival, said David Cook, an expert on Islamic eschatology and associate professor at Rice University. Um, at Rice University, you have to eat rice every meal. It's really weird. Kind of a culty thing. Anyway, just kidding. Um, he says, there are Muslim apocalyptic readings of the book of Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelation. Muslim apocalyptic readings. That's pretty creepy. Um, and he goes on to say, the only difference is the good guys are the Muslims, not the Christians. Well, of course. The Muslim Jesus destroys the cross and converts the Christians to Islam. I think this ascended master Jesus will destroy the concept of the cross. I think he will try to refute the fact that the cross ever happened the very thing that a Christian bases his whole concept of salvation and avoiding hellfire on, meaning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, his shedding of his blood on the cross, that very concept, that master Jesus that's coming, will totally try to refute and say it never happened. Guaranteed this is what's coming. He's sure not going to point people to the true Jesus Christ of the Bible. He's a counterfeit. And Satan always has his counterfeits. In fact, they're going to go one better. They're going to bring back, and, they're, and they've already said they were going to do this. Okay, through channelings, through what the uh, alien abductees have learned, through people that have channeled devils and demons and supposedly uh, communicated with these ascended masters. What they're going to do, one of the first things they're going to try to do is rewrite history. And say, this is what actually happened at the cross. Okay, Jesus wasn't even present. He was whisked off the cross and actually married Mary Magdalene. And then they moved up into the, uh, this is called, this is how they said the Merovingian bloodline got started. This is the whole concept for the book Holy Blood, Holy Grail. And I believe having to do a lot with this Da Vinci Code and all of these other blasphemous things that Hollywood is trying to give us. To totally destroy your faith so you can't get saved. And there's going to be millions and millions of people that buy it. Now all the lukewarm Christians... They're not even saved. They're going to totally buy into all this. Maybe some will escape. I hope they do. And that's why this ministry exists. To, you know, hopefully guide them through this la these landmines that are out there that most of them haven't even gone off yet. 
these landmines. This one that I'm talking about, when the old Ascended Masters and the Antichrist and the False Prophet make their big debut, these haven't even happened yet. Um, so we're trying to avoid all these pitfalls that are, that are inevitable to happen. So this Muslim Jesus destroys the cross and converts the Christians to Islam, said a professor of Islamic studies at the University of Virginia. Whether he does so violently or not is a matter of debate. Now remember, this is a Islamic professor of Islamic studies at the University of Virginia. In Islamic tradition, Jesus is joined by a figure named the Mahdi, or Imam Mahdi, or the 12th Imam, who helps subdue Satan right and rid the world of corruption and injustice. This is their version. okay, And this is why jihad for a certain sect of Islam exists. Because they believe only through mass bloodshed and pretty much the extermination of the Jews will they bring about the Imam Mahdi. You know. Could you imagine if Jesus told us that? Before he left regarding it's like a second coming, he's like, Well, um, I know I've taught you all this stuff, but you're gonna have to go out there and just just destroy and kill as many unbelievers as possible if you want me to come back. I mean, I'm sorry, guys, but I, I know I said what I said in the Gospels and all the other... But, you know, put that aside. You're going to have to go out and butcher as many infidels, as many unbelievers as possible if you want me to come back. That's the catch. Can you imagine if Jesus Christ the Bible said that? <laughs> but this is what their awaited Savior said, okay? But it's, it's just good fruit. I mean, come on. We, we can't argue that it's, it's just good, fun fruit. So, yeah, this is... Uh, Jesus is coming back with the Imam Mahdi, and he will help subdue Satan and rid the world of corruption and injustice. Now, I've done many teachings on this subject. If you key in, there's a, well, actually, key in Mahdi, M-A-H-D-I, in the search box at contendingfortruth.com, or just, I already have a link for you here. You can click on, it'll take you right to that search page on my website. Um, and uh, you can hear more about it, because that's too large of a subject for me to cover. Going back to the article, it says, Some Muslims don't like the idea of Jesus playing the messianic hero and have thus assigned a larger role to the Mahdi, said Cook. That belief is strong among among Shiites, particularly the Twelvers in Iran. Now, these are the ones that really believe in this concept of the, their um, Islamic-awaited savior, the Imam Mahdi, the Shiites. The Sunnis, not so much. So, the Shiites, particularly the Twelvers in Iran, I'm going to explain that in a second, where President Ahmadinejad has often spoke of the Mahdi's return, and he believes he's going to be integral in bringing about their awaited savior, the 12th Imam, uh, President Ahmadinejad of Iran. So, Twelvers believe the Mahdi is the 12th Imam, hence their name, a descendant of the Prophet of Muhammad who has been hidden since the 9th century in some kind of well. He's been in some kind of well. I guess he's really soggy by now. I mean, if he's been in there since the 12th century, that's a long time to tread water. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Anyway, um, so in addition to Iran, faith in the Mahdi's imminent arrival is widespread in Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, Turkey, and Tunisia, according to a 2002 Pew Research Center poll. So now, let me just talk a little bit more about this whole concept of Master Jesus, because I believe this, this thing alone is going to deceive more Christians than any other deception that there is, because they're so locked into the fact, though they may not even be thinking about it right now, but they're so locked into the fact that that's the image of Jesus, and if I see some dude that looks like him, that's Jesus. Yeah, but the, even the Bible says if we or an angel from heaven come preaching any other gospel than is in the New Testament, essentially, let him be accursed. Okay, So this Jesus will not be preaching the gospel of the New Testament at all. It will be diametrically opposed. He will be doing everything he can to um, destroy your faith, to get you to doubt the word of God, the King James Bible in the English-speaking language, and that's going to be his primary goal, to totally steal your faith and to destroy you and to get you to follow him. So, I did a teaching. Um, it's called Deception of Foot, Matt Matreya and Master Jesus, who's also known as Esau Emmanuel Sananda. Okay, that's his, I don't know, 
Ascended Master full name, but Master Jesus for short, anyway. Share International, who is the website that promotes, promotes Maitreya as the, as the coming One World Savior, uh, the coming, the, the awaited Savior at all five different major religions of the world. He calls himself Lord Maitreya. I call him Devil Maitreya. Share International, which is a United Nations sponsored website, only one out there that actually promotes him, uh, promotes, uh, Maitreya as the coming awaited savior. He says he's the, the Krishna to the Hindus, the fifth Buddha to the Buddhists, the Imam Mahdi to the Muslims, the Christ to the Christians, and the Messiah to the Jews. Okay, So, Share International is now advertising Maitreya's emergence on the History Channel, on Rush Limbaugh, on Nancy Grace, on Anderson Cooper 360, and the Wall Street Journal. Now, I, I either listened or saw all of these personally. Okay, They were actually advertising him to make his big debut really soon. The problem is, is it's only going to happen when God permits it to happen. Okay, so the Lord's up there, and he's like, and, and devil may have all kinds of plans. He's wanting it. He's chomping at the bit. Hey, if the devil had his way, 1984 would have been a reality with George Orwell. Would have would have all been in this Big Brother society by 1984. Well, obviously, it wasn't God's timetable. And Satan has to do what God permits him to do. And Satan's always trying to run ahead and run ahead and get it and get this all, the, get the old satanic ball rolling and get the whole New World Order going. And God's like, no, it's going to be in my timing. So, they were advertising Maitreya, is his emergence, on, I mean, History Channel, Rush Limbaugh, Nancy Grace, Anderson Cooper 360, yep, Wall Street Journal, yep, absolutely. Maitreya seems to have a strangely similar share and save the world peace agenda to that of purpose-driven pastor Rick Warren, with his global PEACE plan. They all, and it's like these new millennium goals that we just talked about in the United Nations. Rick Warren's totally yoked up with the United Nations. He's a Council on Foreign Relations member. I mean, the guy's totally satanic to the core, okay? Rick Warren, to what the Pope is to the Catholic Church, Rick Warren is trying to be to the pseudo-Christian non-Catholic Church, okay? They're both at the spear tip of this coming one world religion, and by um, and taking all of these 501c3 corporate institutions, which almost all these denominations are, and getting them all into the same, on the same train, going down the same track, which ultimately lends up in hell. So, it's the same agenda of that of purpose-driven Pastor Rick Warren and his global peace plan, and also President-elect Barack Obama, with his global poverty act and universal service plan. So it's pretty bad if, like, Rick Warren... The United Nations, Barack Obama, and Pope Francis, the head of the Catholic Church, the Vatican, are all on the same page with all the same goals, and they're all in lockstep. I mean, not a good sign. But the Bible predicts it was going to happen, and it's going to. Men who apparently have no aversion to working with any or all of the world religions or non-religions to, quote, save the planet, even though those very people are doing everything they can do to destroy the planet. Okay, via, you know, destroy humanity and the planet. You know, vaccinations, chemtrails, fluoride in the water, chlorine in the water, all the GMOs now. All of the things they're trying to do to, to pervert nature, destroy humanity. All the, the, the use of um, major, major, like, fossil fuels and stuff like that to, to, pollute, to pollute the environment, the oil well things, the Fukushima thing with the radiation spewing out everywhere. All, when we have zero-point energy that we could have used or or free energy, these types of concepts, all of these things are totally suppressed. Okay, so, they're, again, like I said, with those UN, those eight millennial things, they're liars. They want typically the exact opposite of whatever they're saying. But they know you'll like hearing it. And they think, well, if we tell you we're trying to reduce child mortality rate, they're never going to think we're actually trying to do the opposite. Why? You know, well, they're of the father of the devil, and of his lust and of his works they will do, you know, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and that's their, that's their thing. And to deceive, well, that's their whole premise. They're trying to keep everybody deceived. Share International says Maitreya is coming with his satanic counterfeit Master Jesus. Now, this Maitreya is the same one claiming to be the 12th Imam, or the Imam Mahdi. Okay. Whether it actually works out that way, I can't say for sure. But I think he's going to have something to do with it. And I have people want to argue with me all about this. About, oh, no, this guy's the Antichrist. And this, I'm not saying. 
I'm dogmatic that he's the Antichrist. I'm just saying this is what they're saying. This is what the New World Order people are saying. This is what the highest level of world government is yoking up with. Okay? So I'm just saying that's what they're saying. It's not my information. This is what Madame Blavatsky and H.P. Ba- uh, uh, Alice Bailey, H.P. Blavatsky and, and Alice Bailey, and a lot of these women that lived, Adam, Madame Blavatsky started the Theosophical Society, which is basically like directly worshiping Lucifer. Their channelings and these religions that they started are, are all integrally interwoven into all of this thing about the emergence of, of Maitreya and a one world government and these ascended masters making their appearances. And this has been for over a hundred years now. This isn't something that just some little trend that happened last weekend. Okay? And the highest level political figures align themselves with the teachings of Madame Blavatsky, Alice Bailey. If you go up to Matreya's website and to the recommended reading section, they'll take you to all of Alice Bailey's work. And this woman lived back in the 20s and 30s. And then H.P. Blavatsky that lived into the late 1800s. And they're saying, this is what you need to be looking at. And they're United Nations sponsored. Okay? Again, not my research. Not my stuff. I'm just telling you what they're saying. They're going to have some part in this end time delusion and scenario. And, you know, just because Maitreya says he's going to make his emergence and it doesn't happen does not mean that God hasn't thrown another monkey wrench into that whole thing and prevented Satan from doing this. It's not his time yet. God's long-suffering. He's had mercy on us. He's given us a lot of time to prepare that I didn't think we were even going to have. So, he's trying to get, I believe also it has to do with souls being saved. So, going further... um, so, Share International, the United Nations sponsored website that promotes Maitreya through his false prophet Benjamin Kremen through their magazine, says Maitreya is coming with the satanic counterfeit Master Jesus. In collaboration with and Maitreya and Master Jesus is deeply interested in unifying the religious thought of East and West, meaning all religions. Okay? This is what they're deeply interested in. A one world religion. Okay? According to the plan, this will lead to a one universal church uniting all people into one humanity. (laughs) I mean, this is exactly what the Bible predicts. And I don't know of any higher stage on the planet than the United Nations where... and. Uh, you know, obviously the other things that we've mentioned, where they're all saying the same exact thing at a very high level. It's not like some sect of the Mormons is saying this. This is like, you know, the United Nations and and the the Illuminati, the highest level in the Illuminati are, are in league with this. So it is forecast that Master Jesus will yet occupy the chair of the Pope of Rome. Whether that happens, I don't know. Okay. That would kind of throw a monkey wrench into the whole St. Malcolm prophecy that Tom Horn's giving out because then that would mean there would be another pope. Maybe they'll maybe he'll change his name at that point and he won't call himself pope. Maybe he'll call himself whatever. Grand Poobah of the universe. Who knows? Anyway, and that from that seat, Master Jesus will then be able to re-inspire and reorient the whole field of the Christian religion. Who better on planet earth from a satanic standpoint than some guy that shows up looking like all the pictures the catholics gave us with the adonis looking long hair hippie jesus he shows up and all of a sudden he wants to re-inspire and reorient in other words rewrite scriptures destroy your faith uh, the whole field of the christian religion what better way for Satan to deceive christians than that there i can't think of a better possible way and they've been saying this for Decades and decades. That this is how it's going to go down. And then it says, the Christian religion, diverting it from its present political and temporal trends toward a more spiritual approach. Actually, it should say toward a more satanic approach. Could you explain the relationship between the disciple Jesus and the Maitreya, the Christ? Now these are actual quotes from these... um, I think this is from Maitreya's website. Could you explain the relationship between the disciple Jesus? They call him the disciple Jesus. Because, see, they view this master Jesus as the disciple of Maitreya. He's just a little little bit player in the whole thing. He's not, he's not the god of the universe. He, he's not, no, he's none of that. He's actually subservient to Maitreya. They actually go so far as to say 
that when Jesus Christ went into his ministries the last three and a half years while he was on planet Earth, that the reason that he had the power to do what he did with the miracles and all the stuff was because Maitreya came in spiritual form and overshadowed him or essentially possessed his body and gave him the ability to do the miracles that he did on planet Earth. So they even give the whole thing, the whole ministry of Jesus Christ and everything that he did, which they will warp and pollute, obviously, they're going to give all the credit to Maitreya because he was the power source for it all. What, what better thing if you were Satan to do than that that would try to destroy someone's faith? Um, so again, I'll confirm that. Could you explain the relationship between the disciple Jesus and Maitreya the Christ? Quote, by the occult process of overshadowing, they call it overshadowing, I call it possession, the Christ, overshadowing the Christ, meaning Jesus Christ, Maitreya took over and worked through the body of Jesus from baptisms onward. So in other words, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the water and the dove came down, that dove was actually Maitreya that came into Jesus and allowed him to, to go into the wilderness and fast for 40 days and deal with the devil and then go on to... Yeah, they have that much audacity and blasphemy in their satanic hearts. Anyway, I wanted just to touch on that because that's a really big, big, big deal, issue, that I would almost guarantee you, you're not going to hear in probably any church in America, hardly any church in America, if you go. And it's really important to know that, you know, that deception that could be coming. It's super important. Anyway, let's go further. Islamic cleric issues a fatwa permitting rape of Syrian women. NATO-backed Muslim rebels enjoy their sexual jihad. See, because the Muslims are such a, a religion of peace and love and joy and wonderfulness, you know, that I just think we need to kind of document that today, as though we haven't in the past, but here we have a picture, and it's entitled uh, Sharia Law. Sharia Law is not compatible with the U.S. Constitution. Um, this is by Dr. Wafa Sultan. He said that that is not, and it's not. He's right. Um, Sharia Law would always override the Constitution and would destroy it. And the first picture, we have a guy taking pictures of um, his family members all in full burqas with only their eyes showing. So they're, they're on a little family trip there. The second one, you have a child bride. She looks to be in the 11 to 12 range with a old pervert, probably in his 50s. One of these nice arranged uh, weddings you buy your bride and then you can have pedophilia, you know, commit pedophilia and, and, you know, feel good about yourself. And then the next one shows a guy and he's just... Um, I don't know, I don't know if he just beheaded somebody, or I think he's just, I don't know, there's just blood everywhere. It's not real, you can't really see it real good, or I wouldn't put it on the PDF, but you get the picture when you see the picture, and I'm sure he did something like, you know, maybe make a cartoon about Muhammad or something, and everybody, you know, got crazy. And then, and the, the last one is the picture of a, of a Muslim woman, a liberated Muslim woman in a full burqa, and she's being buried alive. Um, and they're literally, there's three guys around her shoveling dirt around her, and it shows her, like, in anguish, and as she's realizing that she's literally going to be buried alive. She's already buried all the way up to past her waist, and she's realizing that, you know, the, the end is going to come. So, yeah, this is, this is Islam. This is Islam in all of its, its satanic glory. Now, this is a graphic report. You might not want to let your kids even listen to what I'm going to be saying. Um, uh... But this, I'm just giving you a little warning here about this report. And um, it starts by saying another Islamic cleric has gone public to announce a fatwa that permits U.S.-backed Pfizer rebels to rape non-Sunni women in Syria as part of a sexual jihad that has seen girls as young as 14 transported into the country to service the needs of the anti-Assad militants. Oh, they're just servicing the needs. Yeah, you know. The Islamic cleric posted on a YouTube video last week that he said he would be issuing a legitimate fatwa, making it legal in the eyes of Islam. So again, they have a rubber ruler. They stretch it any way they want, just like the Catholic Church. But a, a legitimate fatwa for those Muslims fighting to topple secular president Bashir Assad and install Sharia law 
And this is how important it is for them to have Sharia law. I mean, they're willing to just rape, kill, pillage. It don't matter. But, and to install Sharia law to, quote, capture and have sex with all non-Sunni women, specifically naming Assad's own, President Assad's own sect, the Alawites, which is the sect of whatever, Islam, I guess that he is, as well as the Druze and several others, basically all non-Sunnis and non-Muslims, so that they can have, um, capture them and have sex with them. You know? Can you imagine if the Bible said that? I mean, but no, it's okay for the Quran to say it. It's, 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 it's because they're a religion of peace. Um, as CNS News reported last week, girls as young as 14 are being sent to Syria from other Middle Eastern and North African countries. So they're actually being sent to Syria from other Middle Eastern and North African countries following a call by the Saudi scholar Sheikh Mohad al-Arfi for rebels to engage in a sexual jihad. Now, jihad is holy war. That's what, what it means. So this is a sexual holy war. Okay, so I, I guess that, you know, that makes uh, perfect satanic sense, I guess. A so-called, quote, temporary marriage that amounts to little more than sex slavery. See, these sick, debased, perverted Muslim men can go in, and like I told you about the story about Khomeini, where he went in, one of his followers was there, and he walked in the door, and, and I guess he had been there, uh, known this guy or whatever, devoted follower of Khomeini, the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, in Iran, walks in the door and sees his three-year-old daughter and instantly takes a fancy to her and then asks the father later, hey, you know, I want to have a temporary marriage with your daughter so I can have my way with her tonight. And uh, the, the wonderful, wonderful protective dad agrees happily and, and feels as though it's an honor to give his three-year-old daughter to good old perverted maggot Ayatoli Khomeini, um, this, you know, disgusting pervert from the pit of hell, and goes in there and has his way with the three-year-old the whole night, and um, hears her screaming, and the, the family's listening to her scream, you know, and stuff, the, 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 basically the whole night, and, and he's basically torturing her and raping her and all this stuff, who who knows what he did with her. And then, you know, comes out the next morning, has a nice breakfast, and then goes his merry way. That is Islam. Or the Dancing Boys of Afghanistan. Where, and if you don't believe about that, just key in Dancing Boys of Afghanistan, or I'm sure if you do it on YouTube, it'll start to key in before you even, it kind of starts to fill in the blanks for you. Where these perverted Islamic men view it as a status symbol to have little, like, prepubescent boys in their, like, harem so that they can rape them and have their way with them. And they dress them up as women in, like, Islamic women attire, like, with the face veils and the, all the stuff. And they have them come out at these parties they've got. And, I mean, you see the parties. There's all these Islamic guys around drooling over some little boy dressed up like a woman that comes out and dances Islamically, seductively. And then the men bid whoever has the most money essentially gets to take him home or buy him. And there's, and these are, there's like whole legions of these little boys that have been bought and are being used as basically like sex slaves by these sick, disgusting, depraved Muslims that do this. That is Islam. Okay? So, again, um, I'm not sugarcoating this at all. Uh, let's go further here. Later, he backtracked after pressure. Um, Al Arfi had issued a fatwa saying Syrian rebels can tempor temporarily, quote, marry. And see, this is how they get around it. They temporarily marry, like in this case, Khomeini, the three year old girl, for the night, and then they divorce them whenever they've, they've had their way and whenever they're done, they divorce them. Isn't that convenient? You know? I tell you. And, and this is a religion that our government is giving unbelievably protected status to and is doing everything they can to promote this and shove this down our throat. Just like the whole gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual agenda. This is no different. Like I said, if it's evil, if it's wicked, and the more dark and evil it is, the more protected it will be in this wicked, ungodly planet. Particularly in America. So... um Going further here, um, 
Yeah, al Arfi had issued a fatwa saying Syrian rebels can temporarily marry Syrian girls as young as 14 and promising paradise to the wives concerned. So, hey, that's an extra perk for them, you know. They're, they're Yeah, they're going to get raped and, and used and misused and all. But, you know, they have paradise to look forward to. And, unfortunately, the only thing they have to look forward to is hell because they're, they need to get saved. And I, I, I pray that they do get saved. But, I mean, it, it's just all so warped and evil. The fatwa allowed intercourse marriage with captive Syrian women that lasts for a few hours. This is only a marriage that lasts for a few hours. Why? In order to give each fighter a turn. That's a quote. So, you have your way with a woman for a little bit, and then you divorce them in order to give each fighter a turn. A turn at the woman. Which, in Human Events Reports notes, is also known as gang rape. Gang rape. Okay? That's all this is. This wonderful, wonderful religion of peace. Egyptian sheik... Uh, could you imagine if the Christians were doing this anywhere on the planet, on any scale at all? Like, openly like this? I know there's a lot of garbage that goes on in, in a lot of Christian so-called churches. Catholic Church being the chief. You know, pedophilia and all that garbage. And I promoted that. But, I mean, these guys are doing it right out in the open. Do you know how the press would, would, I mean, absolutely. But no, 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 this isn't mentioned. Egyptian sheik, Ishwak, also once urged infidel captives to be taken to the slave market. Where slave girls and concubines are sold and distributed amongst the jihadists. Evidently for their pleasure. Um, then he says, quote, you go to the market and buy her. She comes, she becomes your legal mate through a contract, a guardian or any of that stuff. Now this is a quote from this, from this Ish, Sheik Ishwak Huwani. So you go to the market, you buy her, she becomes like your legal mate. Though without a contract, a guardian or any of that stuff. Can you imagine going to the grocery store and they have like an aisle for women and you just go there and buy one you like? And she just becomes your legal mate for whenever, whatever time you want that to be, and then you divorce her. So, in other words, when I want a sex slave, I go to the market, I pick whichever female I desire, and I buy her. End of quote. (laughs) You know, women's rights. Couldn't ask for a more loving, merciful, giving... I, I don't even know what, what, what adjectives I, you know, to use. Who could want more as a woman than, than this, to be treated like this? Now, this is true liberation, women. We need to, you need to all be standing up and screaming, Allah Akbar, and I'm just kidding, obviously, and just, you know, praising Allah for his, his loving, merciful kindness for women worldwide, you know? And again, you know, obviously all sarcasm, but um, yeah, this is this is basically what we're dealing with here. I mean, this is this is fun stuff. While innumerable reports of FISA militants raping Syrian women have been ignored by the mainstream media, of course, of course, because anything against Islam is is not politically correct. I mean, this is a protected class. I mean, you know. Anyway, the Atlantic Wire today claims that a mere 1% of all rapes in Syria are carried out by opposition fighters and that the vast majority are committed by regime soldiers, the guys we're talking about here, despite evidence that Assad troops have reportedly, repeatedly been ordered not to sexually molest women. In other words, Assad, the guy they're going against, their troops have repeatedly been ordered to not sexually molest. The other ones, the hardcore Islamics, the jihadists, they have been repeatedly ordered to rape the women and have temporary marriages and rape and pillage and do whatever they do. Syrian girls are also being raped by Jordanians in refugee camps as well. Men, usually from Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states, are given free reign at the camp. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Coming in the guise of benefactors offering charity. In return, many want a wife. Um, reports Channel 4 News. But these marriages of convenience for the men at, are, 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 are marriages of convenience for the men at least. So-called pleasure marriages they give cover a sheen of respectability to what is often wealthy men exploiting vulnerable women or children for sex. What also happens with these temporary marriages? Okay. Uh, think about this. How many girls are probably pregnant after this all happens, discarded like trash, 
impregnated. She don't have any, and she's disgraced. She could be easily killed under under a Sharia law as being a whore or whatever, even though she was the one that was raped. Hey, you know, did you know this? That under uh, Sharia law, it takes four, if you accuse any man of rape, you have to have four witnesses, Islamic witnesses, men, that will co- corroborate your story. And you know how often that happens? Zero percent of the time. That's true. Even Sean Hannity says that on his show. You know, as as Catholic, Kath- Kath- uh, as Catholic as that guy is, and as much of a tool for the New World Order that he is, he even brings that up. That, that you know, a, a woman gets raped, Islamic woman, well, you, <laughs> under Sharia law, you got to have four male witnesses um, who are also Islamic to collab- corroborate your story. That, I mean, that's fair, right? Well, what's not to like about that? Okay, so getting back to the main report, it's particularly ironic that extremist Salafist militants who believe their cause is pious and righteous. That's that's what's even better about this. They believe that what they're doing is they're like sanctimonious in an Islamic way. They're pious. They're righteous. They're holier than that. They're doing Allah's work. Well, they are. I mean, because Allah is the, the fallen angel moon god who is of his father Satan. And I guess, you know, they really are. They are the right hand of Allah. Anyway, they're pious and righteous as they beheaded prisoners while screaming Allah Akbar in anticipation of their 72 virgins and white-skinned boys, because you got to have the whole Dancing Boy of Afghanistan thing in there and the whole Paradise thing, which is really creepy. Um, they are still being labeled as freedom fighters by the mainstream media, even as they gang-rape children and commit a plethora of other atrocities. See, I, I love exposing Islam. Because they come off like they're so much better. And us dirty, disgusting, infidel, non-Islamic people. And how they look down their nose at us. And yet, it's okay for them to do all of these atrocities in the name of Allah. And they come out smelling like a satanic rose, evidently. Is what they think. They're going to have a real surprise when they plunge into hell. And this extremist Muslim support for making rape acceptable in Syria and elsewhere is by no means an aberration. And um, the only aberration seems to be the United States' wholesale support for these professed rapists and terrorists, quite laughably, in the name of democracy and political correctness, which is very true. So I'm going to go ahead and end part uh, one there, and we're going to go to part two next. God bless you. Scott Johnson's weekly audios are available for free 24-7 on the internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R-T-R-U-T-H dot com. Please help us continue this work. To support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2nd Line 450, Conover, C-O-N-O-V-E-R, Boulevard West. Number 202, Third Line, Conover, North Carolina, 28613. Or on the internet, PayPal can be used at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.